first Wednesday night of 2024. Yeah, glad to have, glad to have all of you here. Um, uh, of course, uh, tonight, uh, the, 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 the agenda, uh, we're going to go into about um, uh, 7.45, uh, then we'll take a, a, a break, and then we'll go into our members' meeting. The members' meeting will be very brief. Um, there's, there's really not, not, not a lot, uh, but we'll, uh, I'll, I'll, I'll hand that stuff out to after we finish the meeting because um, I know what you want to do. If I give it to you now, you'll be looking at that and won't pay any attention to anything else. So I'll just, I'll just wait. Uh, but it should be, it should be just, a, just, just, a brief, just a brief meeting. Uh, we got the budget. The primary is just, uh, just, just giving you the budget uh, and, so, um, and a few other, other miscellaneous things. So, okay. Uh, so we're, again, glad to have all of you here. Uh, glad to have uh, Mark and Paula join us with us tonight. That's, uh, that's good. And uh, so we want to uh, go to the Lord in, uh, in, in prayer. Uh, there's always a, a lot of needs. Uh, it's, it's okay if I tell them the date of your surgery. The 26th, uh, her, her surgery uh, for her uh, breast cancer is going to be on the 26th. Uh, so let's be praying for Paula uh, as she's getting ready for that. Um, and um, I know there's always a sense of dread, or there is for me. Whenever you have a surgery, there's a sense of dread. So, but um, anyway, uh, so my first cutting did good. So, uh, it, um, it it's, it's, it aches a little bit, but it's it's not it's not it's not been bad. They they haven't done much work on this side, so there's not a lot of scar tissue over here. Uh, I don't know. They they ask every time they do this. They ask me now. Uh, have has has these spots ever been treated with anything before? I said, honey, let me tell you, there is not a square inch of my scalp that had been treated for something. I mean, we've had, uh, I mean, I, I do like, a chem I, I, I'm supposed to be doing a chemical skin peel right now, uh, but I, I, can't, I can't get cancer free enough to do the chemicals because they don't like you to do that stuff while they're doing the surgeries because it, anyway. And so, uh, uh, so I, once I get these three spots, then I'm going to have to do a chemical skin pill. I do one of those every year, and I've done those for, Lord Jesus, I don't know how many years I've done those. Uh, they're, they're not as much now as they were initially. Uh, I don't get the reaction to it like I uh, originally. I'm telling you, the first time I won't go into all that, but the first time I did it, I thought I was going to die. I looked like somebody had literally taken my head and dipped it in acid. Mm hmm it, it, it was, it, it was just, it was just absolutely awful, absolutely awful. I told that dermatologist, uh, well, I didn't tell him because I never saw him. I saw everybody else, but I never saw him. And I told him, I said, uh, they, they came back and said, okay, we'll do this again next year. I said, uh, no, you won't. Because they didn't look after me. That, that was, that was really, I mean, I knew. I didn't know what to expect, but I knew what they were doing was not, not the right thing. The doctor did not tend to me. I mean, my pharmacist, I went to get a prescription filled, and because I know her, and I've known her for a long time. I mean, she, she looked, she said, Elvin, what in the world are you doing? I said, I told her, I said, I'm using this Effudex. She said, I've seen a lot of people use it, but I've never seen anybody look like you look. I mean, it was oozing and bleeding and... I mean, you just feel like you're just going absolutely crazy, you know. And uh, so I went and called. I went and called him right then, and I said, "I need, I need, I need to see the doctor." Um, they said, "Well, we can, um, we we can we can see you tomorrow." I said, "No, you can see me today." <laughs> I don't. I don't generally do that. I really don't. But I said, "You can see me today." And I said, "Somebody's gonna look at me." And said, "Oh, this isn't bad. We've seen people a lot worse than this." I said, "Well." I'm the one you're talking to. <laughs> we ain't talking to everybody else. And so after we got it all done, she said, we'll do it again next year, and she'll never have to do it again. What? The, well, they, they just, but they just put, the, I just had to put the cream on. But see, and you're supposed to do it over a period of time. See, I did it for six weeks. You hardly never do this stuff that long. And I kept asking them, I'd go in periodically, and I, I said, how long am I supposed to do this? 
Oh, let me go ask somebody. They go, come oh, just keep on doing it. They get, never give me a deadline. They never give me a, a time frame. So I told them, and I have done it many times since then, but I thought, you'll never do it again. And she, had, she asked me, she said, Peter's pay yet? She said, why? I said, because you didn't do what you told me you were going to do. You did nothing you said you were going to do. You said you'd have me here every week checking me because this, this could be dangerous and, it, you know, and it needs to be checked on. I said, y'all never check me. The only time you ever checked me was when I demanded you get me checked. So anyway. Oh, well, that's ancient history. It's all done. So anyway. anyway. Uh, so let's, uh, we, got, we got to get started. Uh, so uh, let's remember, uh, I've not seen Billy lately, but I'm going to see him tomorrow. Hey, he's not doing good. Mm-mm. Just not eating. Yeah, yeah. I'm thinking Clinton giving me a fever. Mm. His coach gave you a fever today, and he refused to go to the hotel. Mm. Anyway, but I'm, I'm going to stop in and see him tomorrow. Uh, and Miss Molly, um, I, I, I understand I've not seen her, but I understand she's doing well. She's in, uh, as I've said Sunday morning, she's in uh, Wake Med Carry Rehab Center. And uh, so let's remember uh, Miss Molly in our prayers as well. And, um, and so you may have, uh, we're glad Cheryl's doing better. And everybody else has been sick and sick and got whatever they got. Lord, there's a lot going on out there. Uh, let's also always, always, I don't, I don't mention this as much as I should, but let's always pray for that conflict in the Middle East. Let's, let's, let's pray over Israel and that situation. And because uh, that's a that's a very volatile volatile situation. Any anyone else? Uh, I'm not going to say that. And of course, let's be praying for Paula too, because she's uh, she's facing her surgery. And, uh, one of one of our one of our ministers' um, uh, wife, and actually she she was never ordained minister, but she was as much as a minister as he was. Uh, but uh, Miss Claire Marshburn. Um, she was big in Crusader Youth Camp for years and years and years and influenced a lot of young people, but she passed away, and her funeral was yesterday. I think she passed away before, uh, on the 27th, I think, they had a funeral yesterday. So let's pray. Let's pray for Eric, because he was really dependent on her. And uh, So let's pray for him as well. That's going to be a real transition for his and his life. So, uh, if nothing else, let's join together. Yes, mm-hmm. I, 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 I did. Uh, I, we got a notification on that. Um, that when she, when she passed away. Yeah. That's a chubby rod over that there. But uh, his, uh, his wife passed away. Yeah. Well, let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank you again for the day you have blessed us with. Thank you for this opportunity, Lord, to be able to come together. And Lord, just to fellowship with one another for a little while, and Lord Jesus, just to enjoy, Lord, the Word, and God, I just pray that you will bless us in our uh, business uh, session that we'll be going into, and uh, all that we do there, and God, we would just give you praise and honor and glory and thanksgiving uh, for your goodness and your mercy and your grace. And Father, Lord, I pray that you will uh, help us, Lord, as we continue, Lord, through this study, as we're talking about walking in the Spirit. And Father, Lord, I pray that you will, Lord, help us, Lord, to learn to do exactly that, to walk in your spirit. And Lord Jesus, walk by the power of your spirit, under the anointing of the spirit. Father, Lord, we pray, Lord, for every need among us. We pray for Billy Beasley, Lord, that you will touch him and minister unto him, and God bless him. I pray, God, that you will touch Miss Molly, continue, Lord, to bless her. Father, others that are sick among us, a lot of our children, uh, Joe Hamilton, I, I called and said all of his kids got a stomach bug. So we pray for them and ask, Lord, for your blessings upon them. Father, Lord, we pray, God, that you will, Lord, just uh, touch Paula. She's making preparation for this surgery. Lord, that you will be with her and put your hand of mercy and hand of grace. And, Lord Jesus, that uh, they can uh, alleviate, uh, Lord Jesus, the situation that's going on with her. And, Father, Lord, I pray, God, that you will... Uh, also touch uh, Eric Marshburn. 
May God that you will bless him as Lord is. Uh, I know he's lost uh, a, a, a large part of him. So Lord, may you be with him. And Lord, touch him in this transition. Father, Lord, we also pray uh, for Teresa Beasley, Lord, who is also going through uh, a, radi- a chemotherapy. That, Lord, that you will touch her. And, Lord, you will bless her. We pray for Chubby Robert, God, that you will be with him as he's going through the grief with uh, his wife, because of his wife. Lord Jesus, we pray, Lord, for every need represented among us. We pray, Lord, over the nation of Israel. And, Lord Jesus, everything that surrounds that. And, God, there's just so much turmoil in our world, so much, uh, Lord, that is going on. And we just pray, Lord, that you will just bless and minister and, Father, Lord, and help um, help uh, our world leaders and, God, be with, uh, with, with, with everyone. And, Lord, our own country, Lord, Jesus, I pray for our country, Lord, that you will touch and bless our young people, God. Lord, they, 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 they face, Lord, for, for many of us, we, we're still living, but we've lived a lot of our lives. And these young ones that are coming up, and Lord, what they're going to be faced with, and Lord Jesus, and what they're going to be bombarded with, Lord, is, is more than we can even dare comprehend. So we pray for our young people. We pray for those who I deal with them and teach them, and Lord, influence them and try, and try to train them, God. I just pray, Lord, that you will just touch, and Lord, you will bless. And now, Father, Lord, I just, we just surrender all this to you. Your will be done in all of us, and we will just give you the praise and the glory and the honor for it. And Jesus Christ, our precious Lord and Savior, we pray, amen and amen. Okay, so uh, uh, we've got, uh, we've got this lesson, we've got one more lesson, which is probably going to take uh, a few weeks to do, and uh, uh, of this session of walking in the Spirit. Then after we finish that, then we're going to start into a study of the spiritual gifts. Uh, and uh, one of the things uh, I'm, I'm planning to do, I'm going to give you a spiritual gift test. You can't fail it. You can't fail it. <laughs> well, there's exemptions to every rule. Uh, so when they, they call it a test, but it's really not a test. It's just a, it's just a tool to kind of determine to see uh, what kind of uh, spiritual giftedness you may have. Uh, that you've never even thought about. So I think it'd be a little fun to, to do that. Uh, if you have, you ever, have you ever done a spiritual gift test? You never done anything like that. Uh, so it, it's just, it's just, it's just, it's just interesting. It's just ask questions and you kind of respond. You know, kind of rate yourself on 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 all of those things. And uh, so it's from that it kind of determines or gives us uh, an indication of where lies your spiritual gifts. It's not an end all and it's not a tell all and. It is, it's, it's just it's sort of interesting to me, uh, but uh, we're going we're, 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 we're to do that. So that'll be in about a few weeks uh, down the road. So uh, what we're looking at today is living a life of submission, walking in the Spirit, living a life of submission. Now, uh, as, we, uh, as, as we look at that, uh, when we think about submission, uh, we, 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 we think about well, I don't know what you think about. I don't, I don't know. What, what do you think? What do you, what do you think about when you think about submission? What, what comes to your mind? Being humble. To give in to. to, give in to. to right. To, to deny. It's, it's like a self-denial is, is a part of submission. Anything, anything you think when you think of submission? Love. That's, that, that's good. See, y'all all raised in church. If you go out in the world, you ask what, what people think about submission, they're going to think about bondage and domination. Uh, and, you know, we're not going to be submitted to nobody. We don't want to be submitted to nobody. Uh, that's, 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 that's the world perception of, uh, of, 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 um, of submission. You know, we, we live in a very independent, conscious culture. Is I want to do it my way. And that, that's, you know, you see a lot of these, these slogans, do it your way. I want Burger King, uh, have it your way. Uh, it, it's, it's, you know, it's, it's like me. So it's, a, so it's a very independent, self-sufficient, not dependent upon anybody or anything. That is really the world's concept of submission. And often uh, it can be a very negative uh, concept uh, indeed. Now, but in Jesus Christ, we have a freedom that has been given to us. But some have twisted that freedom around to mean, and I think it's really a 
a reflection of the culture we live in because the church, uh, as, as we've talked about many, many times, the church really, whether we like it or not, is a reflection of our culture. Uh, you, you really do see a lot of the world in the church. And so, uh, so in the church, it comes that same kind of, uh, well, we're free. We've got a freedom in Christ. Christ has set me free, so I'm free to do whatever I want to do. I'm not subjugated to anybody. Well, that is not the idea, the idea of Christ, nor is the idea of the Scriptures that we are free to do whatever we want to do. Uh, however, our liberty in Christ is in a program of perpetuating self-rule for the soul. That's, that's not a, what, what it's all about. So, what when we look at this, what, what does submission mean? So, uh, in, in looking at that, let's start off with what does Christian uh, freedom free us to do? So, when we say we're free in Christ, what are we free to do? Well, first of all, it frees us from practicing sin. So, that, that's, that's one of the freedoms in Christ, that we, we don't have to practice sin. Uh, also, it frees us from the smallness of soul. You know, Jesus really, Jesus, doesn't, Jesus is not trying to suppress us. Now, that's what the world tries to say. Uh, it, was, um, it was Marx who is the, um, uh, the, 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 the uh, that, that brought in communism into the world. Uh, I'm not saying he, he originated, but he's one that brought in the forefront and bought uh, this, this uh, communistic, uh, communism uh, to the world. I think it was Marx uh, who made the statement that religion is the opiate of, of, of the world. In other words, religion sedates us. Religion keeps us from doing things. It's just the very opposite. If it's true Christianity, it opens the window. It opens the door to do great and mighty things uh, in the name of the Lord. So it frees us from the uh, smallness of soul. Also, it frees us from a lone ranger order of independence which proposes me as the single-handed controller of everything in my life. Uh, so uh, so this, this idea of being a lone ranger goes out the window. So we are free from that. It's not just what I, I, I can do. It's what God can do through me and others around us. So when we look at that, uh, the spirit of submission lived out in biblical terms proposes that God could, okay? This is what submission is real. This is what God could do. He can use other people to teach me. So that, that, that's so, you know, that's the reason you're here. I hope, I, you know, maybe, uh, you know, because we can learn from one another. Uh, that's what, one of the things I like about this kind of setting. It's small. We can, we can talk. You can ask questions. Uh, you know, we can, we can teach one another. We can learn from one another. It also just circle me uh, with supporting insight. Because um, when I listen to you, you listen to me, we gain insight from one another as we're, again, part of that teaching mode as well. And I know that, boy, that, that, that's really tiny. Uh, to help me to grow bringing me to a voluntary willingness to be accountable to others, even if that means I'm exposing myself to possibility that at times these others will adjust and correct me in the spirit of love. So see, a big part of submission is willing to be corrected. You know, and that, that's, that's part of growth. I grow when I find out, when I, you know, when, when, when somebody says something. When, now, you know, it depends on what it is to say it. Uh, but, but, you know, but, but, you, but, it, 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 but, but sometimes you learn through criticism. You don't, a lot of times you don't learn a lot from praise. Even though you need that. There, there, there's a balance in those two. But you learn, you know, have you thought about? Uh, Pastor, have you, do, do you think, what do you think about? Uh, you know, and so those things like that, George Janice corrected me all the time. <laughs> she's, she's correcting me all the time. I need it, that's right. Uh, so, but, when, 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 but when those things happen, 
you know, and there's sometimes you resist, sometimes we resist the correction, sometimes we don't like the correction. Um, I, you know, I, 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 did a, I did a funeral, not anyone, Georgiana may know of, uh, I, did a, I did a funeral uh, this past week, uh, and, uh, and, and I, I had no idea I was hitting in the funeral message. I was hitting on some family dynamics that was taking place. I had no idea. I knew there was, some, there was some tension, but I had no idea the level of the tension. I had, and I was, and so one of the siblings that he didn't, he didn't, he, he didn't speak to me after the service was over with, and uh, he told his, he told his uh, sister, he said, "Well, it was a nice service uh, outside of the obvious finger pointing that was going on." Um, but you know, I had no idea. That, mm-hmm, that, that, is, that is very true. Sometimes, and I, I know when I was writing these thoughts down, I kept saying, why are you doing that? Why, why? I thought, Lord, I don't need to say that. Yes, you do. You need to say that. You need, you need to say that. And so, uh, so, so but, but people, you know, but people sometimes resist those things. Now, if they'll learn by it and, and come and have, you know, they can, you can grow by those things. But if you always resist it, there is no, there's no growth to be had. So now, so with that, let's talk about what is biblical submission. What is biblical submission? I don't know that there is any real biblical definition of submission where it says, where Jesus says to any of his disciples, okay, this is what submission is. But we have pictures of submission. We have illustrations of submission. And so what I want to do is look at Matthew chapter 8, uh, verses 5 through 10 first. And this is, uh, th- this is a parable or a story that is told. I, suppose, I guess it's a parable. Um, but uh, it was actually, no, well, it actually goes outside the bonds of a parable because it was really a, a, a real event that was taking place. And this is where the centurion comes up to Jesus and pleading for his help with one of his servants. So let's look at this, because this gives us a great picture of submission, what submission is supposed to look like. Now, when Jesus had entered Capernaum, a centurion came to him pleading with him, saying, Lord, my servant is lying at home, paralyzed, dreadfully tormented. And Jesus said to him, I will come and heal him. But notice, the centurion answered and said, Lord, I am not worthy that you should come under my roof, but only speak a word and my servant will be healed. Now, this is where we get the picture of submission from. For I also am a man under authority, having soldiers under me, and I say to this one, go, and he goes, and to another, come, and he comes, and to my servant, do this, and he does it. And when Jesus heard it, he marveled and said to those who were following, Assuredly, I say to you, I have not found so great faith, not even in Israel. And then in verse 13, Then Jesus said to the Syrian, Go your way, and as you have believed, So let it be done for you. And his servant was healed that same hour. Now, this is really a great picture of the idea of submission from a biblical uh, uh, biblical basis. When you you look at what was was going on, this was really a military setting that that was happening. And so basically what he was saying is, uh, or, 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 the, or the analogy that is being used here is that, is that he, he's saying, look, I understand authority. I understand where authority comes from. I'm a man under authority. And I have people under me who's under my authority. And so he's basically just saying, he's, he's just in, in talking to Jesus, He's saying, Jesus, I understand your authority. You don't need to come to my house. You don't need to step foot in my house. Because I know all you've got to do is say the word. That's all it takes is for you to just uh, say 
the word. And so when, when, you, when, you, when you look at this, 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 this centurion uh, giving this analogy to Jesus, he's giving this analogy to Jesus. You just speak the word. And because the centurion demonstrated such a, such a level of submission to authority, a notable miracle took place. And so this is, this is, what, this is what we decided to kind of sum, sum all this up. First of all, he understood that his submission uh, and his power or authority was not self-derived. He was not a man under authority. He was not a man of authority because he created that authority. He was under authority because it was given to him. He understood that. So it was not self-derived. Also, his authority was delegated through an appointed order and his acceptance of his role as a submitted man was that is what gave rise to the power or the authority he exercised. So he understood, and those of you uh, uh, that, that served in the military, you understand the levels of authority. And he understood this authority. He understood that there was an order. There was a process that took place. There's, I guess in the military, what, a chain of command? There's a chain of command that takes place. So he understood the concept of chain of command. And so, so because of that, because he was a submitted man, he understood that is what gave him the authority. Because in the military, they don't like people who step out of the chain of command, do they? <laughs> That's a no-no, right? You don't, you don't do that. If you, want, if you want to rise up in the ladder, you toe the line, right? <laughs> you, you don't be a rebel. You don't be, you don't be on the outside, on the periphery all the time. And so, uh, so he, under, he understood those things. So Jesus, just uh, as, as I have, so he's really saying, Jesus, just as I have military authority, I know you have authority in another realm. That's what he's saying. So all you need to do is speak a word. Just like in my chain of command, all I have to do is to speak to those behind me. And if I speak it, they do it. Just like those uh, uh, before me, if they speak it, I do it. So, so he said, I have, and this, and this is, and I know this is Jesus' reaction. I have not found so great faith, not even in Israel. Here's a man that's not a, he's, he's not a part of the covenant promise. He's not a Jew. And Jesus said, I've, no, I've, 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 not, I've not encountered none of this kind of faith among my own people. In other words, what Jesus is saying to him, he got it. He understands it. He understands what it's all about. And so what awaits me and others if we to develop this attitude of submissiveness in our own lives? If we learn to be submissive to God, what awaits us? So submission is not oppression, as some want to proclaim that it is. Submission is not oppression. Submission is actually liberating. Because the more you're submissive, the more you gain, not the more you lose. That makes sense. So this is just a great, this is a great picture of submission uh, in, the, in, in, in the Scripture. So that brings us to two questions. First, what are the divinely appointed points of order I need to accept? Now, I don't have answers to these. These are things you have to th think about. These are points to ponder in your own life. So what 
what, what are areas in my life? What, what are those divinely appointed orders that I need to accept? And then, who or what in my life awaits healing, wholeness, or recovery if submission is learned? You know, whether we realize it or not, most of us have places we, God, you can't touch this area of my life. I don't want you here. This is my, this is my life. This is my way. I, I remember one of the things I said in that funeral, and I don't know why I said it, it wasn't even in my notes. I, 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 you know, what I see, what I see so often in people is people are trying to fix things themselves. I can do it on my own. I don't need nobody. I don't need you, God, meddling in my mess. And I just, I, I, I made that kind of a uh, statement, and I said, how's that working for you? Well, couldn't find this brother that was really agitated with me. That's exactly what he was doing. I found out later. He was trying to, he was trying to fix his life himself. And it wasn't working for him. I had no idea. No idea. Holy Spirit knows. There ain't, ain't, no, ain't no secrets. Holy Spirit knows. Uh, so these are just two questions to ponder. I think we all have to look at that. And if we ever learn that sense of giving it up and surrendering our lives to him, it really makes life better and freer. The Bible is clear. There is a God-ordained order for every facet of our lives. That's clear. There's an ordained order for every facet of our lives. And, and, and anywhere we rebel, you see, who are you rebelling against? Ultimately, you're rebelling against God. And rebellion, according to the Old Testament, Samuel to Saul, rebellion is as of witchcraft. Hmm. It's ungodly. It opens up the door for spiritual elements that are not holy. So anyway, and so when we get right down to it, Jesus is our best example of submissiveness. There's no better example we had in the scripture of what it means to live a submitted life than through Jesus, than, than Jesus Christ. Philippians chapter 2, beginning with verse number 5. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus, who, being in the form of God, did not consider it robber to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation, taking the form of a bondservant, and coming in the likeness of men. So you see, Jesus, he was submissive, even though he's God. I mean, look, I know this gets really befuddling, and it gets confusing, and it's hard to understand. Jesus is not a lesser God. Jesus is God. But even in his humanity, he had to be submissive to the will of the Father. He had to do what had to be done. And he did. He became, he, he came in human likeness for us. And I, I think sometimes, I think, I really think sometimes we, we miss how hard that was for Jesus. What he did could not be easy. Now I know he's God. And so well, God can handle anything. Yes, he can. Yes, he does. But you, you just think about it. He coming to this, to this world and seeing all that there is and how we think and how we operate. And, you know, you see Jesus every once in a while just getting really frustrated. How long have I got to be with you folks? For you wake up and you understand. What I'm trying to do. I mean, there's there's moments, there's, there's moments in the gospel where Jesus 
Jesus said, I, I'm, 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 I about had it here, up here with you. That's exactly right. Great example. When he went in, he was overcome. He had been to that temple many times, but when he went in on that day, he was overcome with what they had made his father's house to be. A den of thieves, he called it. He was, he, was, he was overcome with these things. And so he didn't sin, but yet he demonstrated, even with his own disciples, you, you see those, I, one, one example I use so often is when, when, the, when, the, when the mamas were bringing their babies to Jesus and wanting Jesus to bless them, and the, the disciples thought, this is beneath him. You need to keep your babies over here. You know, Jesus ain't got time to mess with your babies. He's got other important things to do than to bless your little tots here. But that was their attitude. And so they were trying to, they were trying to, trying to keep them away. And Jesus, you don't see it in, in, in the way it's translated, but if you look into the original language, he was indignant. Don't you dare. Don't you ever do that again. Don't you ever. Don't you ever stop a child from coming to me. Don't you know that, they, that these are such as the kingdom of God? Unless you become like a child, you'll, you'll no ways enter into the kingdom of God. Don't you ever do that again. So he had to get on his disciples every once in a while, straighten them out. Oh, yeah, yeah, often. That, and that, that, is, that is the King James view. But the, but the idea, but it is very emphatic. That is an emphatic Really, really, all right. You know, that, 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 yeah, that, that's right. So some, some translation, tra truly, truly, I say to you, but it, that, absolutely, really, 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 are you know, re this, is, this is exactly what I mean. Very emphatic, very straightforward. Uh, so, so anyway, so, uh, and being in the form and appearance as a man, he, what did he do? Terry, I think you used that. Humble, he humbled himself. That is a sense of submission. Humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even the death of the cross. Therefore, God also has highly exalted him and given him the name which is above every name. Now, when you look at that, when you look at, at, the, at the story we, of the centurion, because this man was submissive, he received a great miracle. Here, the same, you've got, you got the same parallel here. Because Jesus was submissive. He humbled himself to the plan of God. There's going to be an exaltation. And so I think the same thing applies for us because this goes on. That in the name of Jesus, every knee should bow of those in heaven and those on the earth and those under the earth. And that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God of God the Father. So you see, with submission, there comes blessing. With submission, there comes blessing. Okay, so his example calls us to discover the power release and growth that will only happen in and through us if we properly learn the spirit of submission. In other words, we, we grow by being submissive. The path down to submitting is the way to receive an authority. And, and even then, all authority in the spiritual realm is only to be exercised in the spirit and with the attitude of a servant. So we're, we're called to be servants. All of us are called to be servants. And that is so important. And then we, 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 we go back and we look at, uh, at Matthew again in chapter 20. But Jesus called them to himself and said, You know that the rulers of the Gentiles lord it over them, and those who are great exercise authority over them. He's using again here a natural analogy. This is, this is the way the world operates. He said, Yet it shall not be so among you. But whoever desires to become great among you let him be your servant. So greatness in the kingdom of God is not those who hold great positions. 
It's those who are willing to humble themselves and serve others. Hmm. And whoever desires to be first among you, let him be your slave. <laughs> we don't want to hear that. <laughs> Ain't nobody slave. And just as the Son of Man did not come to be served, but to serve and to give his life a ransom for many. Hmm. Submission to God's arrangement and order is not to rank people above others, but to serve the interests of all so the whole army comes to victory. So it's, it's not, even though there are positions, even though there are hierarchies in the, in the, in the angelic realm, uh, in, the, in the human realm, there, there are, but it doesn't mean that one is above the other. It means we all serve in our appointed place. And that's the difference. We all serve in our appointed place. And one of the biggest areas in the church that I see, the biggest failures that I see is when people are trying to serve where they've not been appointed. Trying to do what they've not been called to do. You see it in the pulpit. You see it in the pew. You see it in a lot of places. That's one reason we're going to talk about spiritual gifts. Because God will give you what you need. He will equip you to do what he's appointed you to do. And so when we serve outside of our giftedness, it rarely ever works. Okay, the submitted disciple learns that there is a tactical advantage, a mutual protection that takes place through committed involvement with a church family. That's important. Submitted service as a member of the body. Service. God has no hood ornaments. I know there are things for pain. God has no hood ornaments in the church. We're not there just to be pretty. Even hood ornaments serve the purpose. Originally. Don't know that. Hood ornaments actually had original purpose. They eventually became... Uh, pieces of, uh, of, of decoration. But original hood ornaments were there because the thermostats uh, to control the, uh, the, 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 the temperature of the engine was actually in the hood ornament. <laughs> you didn't know that, did you? I just learned that little tidbit. That little, one of my little tidbits of trivia <laughs> that I learned not, not long ago. So, but then they then eventually became decorative, but actually, actually uh, it, was, it was part of the thermostat system. Uh, in some of these cars. And then, uh, and then acceptance of a personal accountability ability to others in Christ. A mutual accountability to one another is very, very important. Submission has nothing to do with subjugation or domination because submission cannot be forced. I've heard, I, I, I've heard Brother Herbert Carter, God rest his soul, I've heard him say it more than one time. It's absolute truth. You cannot legislate holiness. You cannot force people into holiness. And that, that to me, that was one of the fallacies that I saw in the doctrine of, of holiness churches, which we were part of that, is trying to make people holy based upon the standard that we create. Look, you can't beat your children into submission. No, you can't. You, you, you can try, but you can't beat them into submission. Submission, submission is something that you have to work on together to learn. Now, I don't say you should never spank a child. We won't go into that, but I, you know, sometimes, sometimes they need it. Sometimes when they're disrespectful, 
and you set the we you set the line and they cross the line, you need you, you need to let them know. And sometimes the spanking is, 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 is what's called for. But you can't make, just like well, I can't make church people be submitted. That is something you have to desire within yourself uh, to, to do. And so when we, when we look at that, oh, man, it's time to stop. Well, let, let's, let's, let's do this and we'll stop. The song, Trust and Obey, that's, that's got a great message in it. When we walk with the Lord in the light of his word, while the glory he sheds on our way. While we do his good will, he abides with us still and with all who trust and obey. Not a burden we bear, not a sorrow we share, not a toil he doth richly repay. Not a grief or a loss, not a frown or a cross, but is blessed if we trust and obey. But we never can prove the delights of his love until all on the altar we lay. For the favor he shows, for the joy he bestows, are for them who will trust and obey. Then in fellowship sweet, we sit at his feet, or we walk by the side of the way. What he says we will do, where he sends we will go. Never fear, only trust and obey. Trust and obey, for there's no other way to be happy in Jesus but to trust and obey. That song is about submission. Song of submission. Okay, that's it uh, for, uh, for, for, for this evening. We've, I'll finish this up uh, next week when we go into the next lesson. Again, thank you for being here. Again, we're going to have a, um, we'll just take just a, just a, uh, just a, just a break, uh, pass out some uh, uh, information, uh, and then we'll go into our, uh, to our business session. Again, it won't, it, it, it'll be brief. It won't take us long to do this, I don't think. Okay? All right. So just take a little bit of break, and we'll get some of these uh, papers uh, sent out uh, to you.